Welcome to episode 7 of the Scholar's Age. I'm here with Rob Aspel and we're going to be chatting a little bit about uh, some important components with internal training, um, especially Qigong. As people know uh, generally that Qigong is divided up into different types, so most people are, are familiar with the fact that there's medical Qigong systems and there's martial Qigong systems and maybe you could say a spiritual Qigong system, sometimes called religious systems, um, that, you know, a part of Taoism and Buddhism and things like this, but not many people know that there's a further distinction uh, between Qigong systems, which is the Hotian and the Shantian, or the uh, post-heaven and the pre-heaven uh, traditions of Qigong practice. Just a bit of a warning that maybe some of the other podcasts have been uh, quite friendly for beginners, but maybe this one might be uh, a little bit technical with some of the terminology. So if you've never practiced any form of Qigong, it might be a little bit confusing, uh, but I don't know, maybe give it a try, see, what, see what, how you find it. Basically, when I first started out in Qigong, I encountered uh, these two different systems, the, the post-heaven and the pre-heaven, uh, ways of understanding how Qigong works. And you, you shouldn't make the mistake of thinking that they are direct systems. They're more to do with categorizations uh, of internal practice. And this has relevance to Chinese medicine and Negong internal training and, and martial arts as well. Because you can kind of, um, within internal training, you could probably categorize most internal arts according to these two terms. I came across them, but I didn't have any clear teachings on why there was a distinction between these two categories of internal practice. Um, and in fact, I don't think that it's often within the public arena, the public knowledge, that there is this distinction between the two systems. Often when you pick up Qigong books for internal training books, they don't make it clear when they talk about Qigong that there's these two broad categories uh, of practice. And if I'd have understood it when I first encountered these arts when I was very young, then it, it would have saved me a lot of hassle, a lot of time trying to figure out where the contradictions uh, lay. So basically in brief, the Ho Tian, the acquired or post-heaven uh, forms of internal practice, they basically work with the level of qi you have at the moment. That's kind of an oversimplified definition, but it gives us a working definition that we can discuss. So whatever level of potential vitality you have within your body, right this moment, that is what that form of internal practice works with. So if you are like me, a 38 year old male, I have a certain potential level of energy that was very different from when I was uh, a small child and very different from the amount of energy I'll have when I'm an elderly man and nearing the end of my life. The level of energy and vitality that I have right now, I can work with using Hotian or post-heaven systems to try to maximize that energy so I'm not uh, wasting it, I'm not using it less efficiently than I could. And a lot of Qigong practices or internal practices uh, work in that way. You could say that a lot of Chinese medicine is a Hotian treatment. Um, yeah, so within Chinese medicine, we talk about the Hotian as the acquired, don't we? Or the, uh, like you said, the, the postnatal. So these are other terminologies that we use. Mm. Yeah, so, um, so I guess acupuncturists or Chinese medicine practitioners and, and students will come across these terms in terms of the Jing. You know, they would have heard of the acquired, uh, the acquired nature or the acquired qi compared to the congenital Jing or the congenital qi, right? That's right, yeah. yeah. So the acquired would be the Hotian. Yes. Whether it's congenital or the postnatal would be Shantian. And that's why in Chinese medicine the, the acquired or the, the, the postnatal, uh, post-heaven qi is normally linked to like the food you eat, right? And the, exactly, the yeah, yeah. The food, the food we eat, the air we breathe. So the, the Shantian stuff, the congenital stuff, that's, that's finite. Yeah, yes. and it's, it's, the, it's like, as you were saying, it's the acquired or the, the Hotian and the, the postnatal, which is the stuff we're kind of supplementing that. You know, yes. the, the, the better that supplementation is, the longer we're going to last because we're not having to dip into our reserves, which are our congenital, yeah. So we could say, I think, that HOTN systems of internal practice are based upon the energy that you can get at your current phase in life from sources of energy that you couldn't get in the womb, right? So food yeah. and air. It's, essentially, it's lifestyle, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so it's the lifestyle, like you say, it's the food that we eat and the air that we breathe. Yeah, which obviously wasn't a factor when we were in the womb, right? No. <laughs> so the second category is the uh, Shantian or pre-heaven uh, or, yeah. or prenatal really. Pre when, they, when they talk about post-heaven, pre-heaven, they're not 
talking about the cosmos. They're, they're essentially, with regards to humans, human life, talking about uh, in the womb and outside of yes, the womb, yeah, really, aren't yeah. they? I think so. I mean, I mean, it does go a bit beyond the womb in some respects, doesn't it? Because it's also obviously the congenital that's been passed down from. They say they say three generations, don't they? Of, yeah, of, that's of, right. Jane. But primarily, it's yeah, it's, it's before you're born. It's meaning the, the the in the womb and and what you get before then. Yes, and after, right? It's interesting when you say the three generations because yeah. of course what's often missed is that uh, what you do in your life will often be reflected in the lives of the health of your children or your grandchildren. Yeah, hugely. Mm, so sometimes people can be one of these people that say, oh, I can eat as much as I want and I don't get fat. Yes. And then your grandchildren could suffer with digestive conditions quite badly as a result of your immunity to your bad that's lifestyle why we choices. Can, uh, that's why we can party so hard after we've had kids. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> the it. logic. Responsib- yeah, that's it. Responsibility gone. Then that surprise child comes along oh. and ends up the weak one of the litter. And then you feel guilty. Yeah, the, the guilt eats you up. Mm-hmm. Oh, what have we done? So the the post heaven systems are based on this, right? The potential energy you can have at any moment, depending on who you are, like maximizing your energy. The pre heaven systems are the Shantian systems, the categorization of internal practice, um, is essentially based on something different it's based on the potential energy that you had in the womb mm. yeah so it's it's a little bit different so i'm a 30 year eight year old male um, who has had 38 years on this planet of essentially abusing my health in one way or another uh, as anybody who hasn't led a really sheltered life uh, will have done yeah. and if i practice hotian or post heaven systems i'll be trying to work efficiently as i can with the energy within my body and, and maximizing my 30 year old a 38 year old male chi okay if i practice a shantian system the idea is to access the uh, potential energy that i had within the womb right so so shantian systems they're, they're quite advanced though, right yeah they're not that, beginners that be, work yeah that would be the more advanced stuff mm-hmm. yeah. and the reason for it is that they work with the jing Yes, so these are Jing practices. Yeah, and this is where the confusion comes in because you'll see a lot of Qigong books are very generic and I don't think a lot of Qigong writers, some do, but a lot don't realize that because these categorizations exist, that just because you're doing Qigong, it doesn't mean you're working with the Jing. Yeah, okay. okay. And I think that's an error. Yeah. That's made, I, same with Chinese medicine. Yes. I think sometimes people think they're working with the Jing more than they are when they treat someone with acupuncture. Quite possibly, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. often what you're actually doing is supporting the qi, which supports the supports kidneys, the kidneys. Yes, which, which helps the jing. Yeah. But yeah. you're not directly working with the jing, right? No, no, no. no. I mean, that's what acupuncture is. We, we said this last time, that we, we work mm. on the qi, the, the, the pivot between the two, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're not really directly affecting the jing. No, and the same with qigong. You'll see books written and they'll say, look, here's a lower dantian, here's a middle dantian, here's the upper dantian, and we refine the jing. Okay. Then actually, if it's a hotian system of qigong, that's not what you're doing. No. So most... So is hotian always, you're working with the qi? Pretty much. Always working yeah, with Yeah, you could say 95% of it. Maybe it's yeah. touching the jing, because everything is interlinked. Okay. But yeah. it's not direct work with so the jing. So things such as, um, so it's like marrow washing and stuff. That was chance Ooh, right? Yeah, marrow washing is a very, very... I think marrow washing... Um, is probably the least understood aspect of the internal arts okay. for Qigong, I think, <laughs> and Neigong. It's it's very, very advanced work. Okay. Um, and a lot of... So you've got these two. You've got the, the tendon changing, and yes. you've got the yeah. marrow washing, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, from what I've seen, they are the two most misunderstood aspects of these arts because you'll get lots yeah, of get marrow that. washing yeah. systems out there and lots of tendon changing systems out there that just aren't actually related to those practices whatsoever. They've just taken the name. <laughs> taken so you get name. people beating themselves with wire rods. And for the tendon changing, yeah. I've for the tendon that. changing, yeah, that. which has nothing to yeah, do yeah, with yeah. tendon changing and slightly... And the marrow washing, you get people um, imagining things moving into their bone marrow. It's like okay. it's not related yeah, to not the marrow washing. No, no, they're very, very deep practices. Actually, still very, very uh, secretive, those two. Oh, shit, I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> you don't say anything about that. The, uh, the, the sages will come and strike you down. Huh? Okay. <laughs> I didn't mean marrow washing. I didn't mean marrow washing, no. Oh, sorry, <laughs> slip of the tongue. So, the Shantian system is essentially based in alchemy. Yep. And this is part of the reason where the confusion lie is because medical Qigong systems uh, or Hotian, most of them are medical, but Hotian systems of Qigong, what they do is they, they take on our chemical terminology when they're not actually our chemical arts. Yeah, I think you get a lot of that. When, when people misunderstand the, a topic, they often just interchange things, don't they? Yeah, but I mean, that did happen hundreds of years ago. Yes. Yeah. I mean, they, they even the oh, term... I don't mean just now, I mean, yeah. Yeah, overall. just generally. Yes. I mean, even the term Dantian shouldn't yeah. apply to Qigong. Okay. Not to Hotian systems. Right. It should only apply to Shantian systems. But I know to contradict myself, I'll always talk about having a Dantian. 
But so that's because, well, because the term Dantian, right? Yeah. Dan means the elixir. Yeah, the cinnabar, right? Yeah. So the idea, yeah, it's, it's the ore of mercury, right? Cinnabar, but it's representative of the um, uh, mystical fluid, the jade fluid that's developed inside the body, the elixir, okay. that an alchemist was trying to form from the congenital substances yeah. inside their body. So the idea was if this substance could be developed and built within the body, it could be stored in the Tian, the field yes. so of, of the Dan Tian, the elixir field. It could be stored in here and then used as a kind of internally developed alchemical pill to change the body and the spirit. Okay, sure. So you so only have a Dan like Tian sense, yeah. when you have the elixir. Yeah. Otherwise, you don't have an elixir field, you just have an, a field. Yes, okay. Like a potential space where the elixir can be. So Qigong, generally, in the vast majority of cases, never develops the elixir. It's not strong enough. So that's that. quite advanced stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's alchemy. alchemy. I guess it's, so that's the compressing the pill then, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, so you even have exercises that use that name. But the actual compressing the pearl, yeah, is yes. the formation of the dam. Yeah, which comes after a long, long, long time. A long, long time. You're, you're, actually com- you're not compressing the pill. You're doing compressions to form the pill, which takes a long time. Yes. Yeah. 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 So when the elixir forms inside the body... I mean, essentially, you're at the far end, the real deep parts of yeah. alchemical training. It's not beginner's level. Yes, yeah, yeah. And Qigong exercises aren't deep enough to get you there. Okay. But they do... Everyone knows that Dantian essentially exists in the lower part of the body, right? In the lower abdomen. So Qigong, Hotian systems of Qigong also use that region of the body for something. They use it to process energy, qi, yeah. right? Yeah. To, to build it. So what they did was they named that location, because they needed a name for it. They couldn't Good. say, build the chi in the lower abdomen. The chi, yeah, over yeah. They needed to use a location name, so they used the name Dantian. They okay. borrowed the term from our chemical teachings. So they've also called it the sea of chi, haven't they? Yeah. That, that area. Yeah, chi hai. Yeah, okay, yeah. chi hai, yeah. Maybe, maybe, I mean, maybe that would be a better name than the Dantian for that. Yeah, because that's kind of what it is to begin with, isn't it? It's like a, mm. a sea of chi, and that's what you're kind of churning to start circulating through the rest of the body. That's right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Maybe, maybe we shouldn't. It's probably a bit late now, isn't it? Yeah, to drop the turn down to the <laughs> and call it Chi High all the time. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's like people anything. won't catch on, will they? No, it's like uh, like point names, right? Okay. So sometimes in Qigong, people don't know that that the acupuncture point names don't refer to points in Qigong. Yes, as you know, as you well know, right? Mm-hmm. But sometimes you say that it's almost like heresy to Qigong people, <laughs> you know. So, for example, uh, you have Ming Men, which is under the second uh, lumbar vertebra in acupuncture, yeah, as most yeah. people who've used needles will know. It's a very small point, you know, it's like... Do what? four, this is right. Do four, yeah, like what, a couple of millimeters across, you could argue, yeah, on yeah. a big guy? Yeah, like it's, it's, small, yeah. yeah, it's not a big point, right? But in Qigong, it doesn't mean that. Yeah. In Qigong practice, it means the entire of your lower back. Oh, really? Yeah, so they, okay. use, they use the term Ming Men to refer to the lumbar region of your spine. They're, yeah. So they're, they're borrowing yeah. the acupuncture name to refer to a region. Yes. Another example being Yong Shuan, kidney one. Yep. Okay, yeah, yes, yeah, so, yeah. Which is obviously a very fine point in acupuncture. Yeah. yeah. You won't want to miss it with a needle because it'll fucking hurt. Yep. Or the, the patient, obviously, <laughs> not, the, not the therapist. Do you know, I've almost been, I've almost been, almost been kicked by uh, needling this point. I'm not surprised. Yeah, don't, don't get too close. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of a shock, especially if you don't know it's coming, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So obviously, kidney one is a very fine point yes, in acupuncture. Yeah. But in Qigong, what it actually means um, is to spread the bones of the feet. Of course, yeah. 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 So, 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 so the areas, aren't they? They, are, they, are, yeah. I mean, they use these very fine points of reference, essentially. Yes. Yeah. So this is part of confusion, isn't it? Cause, okay. And I can understand why. Because I was confused for years and years and years for the same thing. Because you've got... A system of practice called Qigong that borrows terminology from Chinese medicine yeah. to explain regions of the body. But it's so that if you were in the know, you could go, oh, yeah, it means that region yeah. of the body. But it got misunderstood as these tiny it's, little fine so points. It's not, so it's very specific yeah. with acupuncture, but not so specific with Qigong. Exactly. You don't need to be, right? Yeah. And then it's the same with uh, alchemy. What happens was they borrowed the term Dantian to refer to the region of the lower abdomen where the energy is built. But you're not actually using a Dantian. You're not building an elixir in it, right? No, exactly. And, and if you look at that, you can see there's the distinction between the Hotian and the Shantian, because yes. the Shantian is aiming to build the elixir, because yep. the elixir will return you to your potential energy when you're in the womb. Okay. And the Hotian system, the postnatal, is just simply using the chi that's within your using body. Using the chi that you've already got in your body. Yeah. 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 And that, that's an important distinction to understand. And it's been hard. Sometimes I've tried to explain that to Qigong practitioners, and they've it's been quite a difficult thing for them to take on board, you know. So do you have do you have Shantian Qigong systems or Shantian systems of a more Nadan, more alchemy, internal alchemy? 
Yeah, they're generally alchemical. Generally alchemical. Yeah, so the majority of Shan Tian Qigong yeah. working with the Jing is done seated. Seated, yeah. yeah there are some standing, standing okay. but it's yeah. mostly seated, hardly yeah. ever moving. So all things such as Dao Yuns and stuff, that, that'd be more Ho Tian. Oh, Ho Tian. Because that's the, oh, you're, you're, you're purging, you're moving, you're guiding yep. the Ho Tian Qi. Yeah, yeah, you're okay. moving the Qi, right? Yeah, of course. Qigong is not called Jing Gong. <laughs> it's Qigong, right? It's it's aiming for mastery of the Qi. So, yeah, it's, it's all Ho Tian. Yeah. So this is why they say there's a classical tenet within Qigong where they say that the beginner does 90% moving exercises, 10% static. Yeah. And the advanced practitioner does 90% static, 10% moving. moving. Yeah. Um, that's not to say that all static exercise is shantian or all, you know. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, but it's, it's general rules. Yeah, it's a general and it's, it's getting at something. Because Jam, Jam Zhong, for example, is not shantian, it's a hotian practice. Oh, no matter really? what Jam Zhong people say, okay. it's, a, it's a hotian practice. They say it's shantian. Really? They often do, yeah, but it's a hotian practice. So <clears throat> what they're implying is not that you stop moving, but rather that you move from the hotian to the shantian as your. Yeah. As your practice develops, you finish refining the qi, and then you learn to build the elixir within the qi. So essentially, once you stabilize the qi enough, mm -hmm. that's when you can start tapping into the, the jing and then essentially the shen, right? Yes. Okay. So the one other phrase is, you, is one other classical rule is you go from jing to qi to shen. Yes. But actually, it's qi to jing and qi to shen. <laughs> that's right. It's qi to jing to qi to shen. Okay. Yeah, you, you need to start with your energy being refined yeah. Yeah. before you move on to developing the the essence. And even earlier than that, before you work with the chi, you need to get your body sorted, right? Yeah, and that's the thing, isn't it? You know, like before you even get to before hotia. you even get to the hotel, yeah, yeah, you need yeah. to structure the body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like what you say with meditation. You know, you, before you even get to meditation, you've got to stabilize the mind. The yeah. same thing with the body. Before you even get to the chi, to the qigong, yes. you've got to stabilize the body. You've got to work with the body. Exactly. And, yeah. and people think they're going to use qigong to fix the body or meditation to fix the mind, yeah. but actually, the mind needs to be fixed before you start meditation. Yes. And yeah. the body needs to be fixed before you start qigong. Yeah. 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 So you're you can't start the race if you're not at the starting line. Uh, I think a lot of people are, are are still warming up for the race, aren't they? You know. They yeah. they're three miles behind the race line. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They haven't got to the start line. They're still yet. at home. They're still at home. <laughs> they're still thinking about getting, getting off the couch. couch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're not there yet. Okay. But yeah. I mean, it makes sense, right? Because I mean, you know, you do have to build a certain body to, to even start these processes, right? You know, you yeah, have of course. To, you have to open up. I'm not saying you have to be super flexible, but you have to open up. You have to your joints have to be yeah. um, open, but also you know, you know, strong enough as well and tight enough because you get certain people which are are, are too open. There's too much laxity in the joints. And yeah, stuff. too flaccid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. You, you know, you need to have a certain body structure to start these. Which is fine, because most people will have to start there anyway, you know. It's, it's Almost all classical systems start with opening and strengthening exercises. Yes. They have yeah. different ways of doing it. That's Tai Chi and Qigong, right? Yeah, it's sure. the same. Yeah, of start with that first. Yeah. I think I find that's lost a lot with a lot of these classes. You know, mm -hmm. I've obviously um, been with Lotus Nagon for a while now, but I've yeah. did, I did plenty before then, just various other courses and classes and stuff. And, uh, you know, a lot of that sort of, I don't want to call it body conditioning in the hard sense of the word but it's body conditioning really isn't it yeah. yeah you're not conditioning it in the way people think no it's not like bashing a, yourself with baseball not, bats across yeah, yeah, the yeah. shin it's and not shit like a marine like workout or anything is it <laughs> no. well sometimes no. it almost does <laughs> yeah it depends who's doing the warm up yeah, yeah, yeah. but no it, no you're right It's gonna. you have to build the right body just like if you were going to be a world champion weightlifter yeah. you'd need yeah. a certain body I think people get surprised Mr Bean <laughs> doesn't have the right body for lifting weights right no, he has to build the body yeah. first before he can win the championship and like I don't know, a top rugby player wouldn't have the right yeah. body for ballet. But I mean, I think the warm-ups are really, they're really key, you know, because let's yeah. see, I don't know, we're probably going off topic a little bit here, but I think they are they are really key for, for the mobilisation of chi, you know, even just yeah. getting the blood moving, you know, we know that blood yes. carries chi, chi moves blood, right? Yes. And I think just getting that blood moving really does, yes. uh, completely, it's a game changer when you're doing a, when you're doing a, a training session of chi gun. Yeah, that's you true. Know, just, Most, just getting that movement. Most people would, Benefit quite a lot, I think, often when they first come along of just increasing their circulation quite a lot. Just before, before spend a few minutes start. just jumping up and down on the spot. Bouncing around. Bouncing around, yeah. opening the joints a little bit. You don't have to be able to do box splits or anything like that. <laughs> just open, you know, open up the joints. You know. Yeah, sure. These things are massive and I think they are missed in quite a... Quite a not not yeah. everywhere. I mean, I've been to places as well that have done it, but, you know... I it's think often they, a hard sell when people come into Lotus Ningong, actually. They want to come for Qigong and the first thing we do is stretch their shoulders yes. and their spine. And, and we do hips. quite a lot, isn't it? We do quite a lot. Yeah, open them up, get the yeah. blood flowing, like yeah, get the yeah. joints open because some, she's got to move through those spaces. It, it really does. Yeah, it's like you say, you know, it's getting to the starting line is, is important. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so this is moving the chi, right? So the so yes. Tian is all about the chi. Yeah, that's right. So if you want to look at um, distinct qualities of the Ho Tian and uh, Shantian systems, 
pretty much you could say that Hotian systems often work with the breath. That's one thing that's quite important, nice deep breathing. And obviously the breath is one of the parts, the aspects of the acquired chi, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, of course, so regulating the breath is huge. Shantian systems don't tend to work with the breath. Okay. They right. tend to work with the jing. Yeah. They tend to work at the other end, at the base of the body. So a lot of perineum control okay. um, and focused uh, governance of the furnace and the cauldron, which I'll come to in a little while. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Another hallmark of them is the location of the lower dantian. So both systems don't even place a dantian in the same place. Oh, just course, to be confusing. Of course they don't. <laughs> of course they don't. <laughs> Why wouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> that would make things way too easy, yeah. right? I, I remember going into, um, when I first sort of ventured out into Asia lots of years ago, right? And I'd already been practicing Qigong for a long time mm. in Europe uh, yeah. with Chinese and Western teachers, like both. And then I went into China and all of a sudden I encountered this other way of working because I was used to the standard Dantian positions most people would be familiar yes, with, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is obviously lower Dantian, two fingers below the navel, yeah. middle Dantian in the chest, yeah. in the, basically the heart, right? Yeah, yeah. And then the upper Dantian being the center of the head. Yeah. yeah, so lower abdomen, heart, and head. Most people would be familiar with those as the Dantian locations, I think. And most Qigong books would say that's where they yes, yeah, yeah. sit. That's what I've been practicing. And then I got to China and I heard <laughs> about this really top uh, internal master. So I was like very excited and I went yeah. to meet him, um, which wasn't the easiest thing uh, at all, but finally got to meet this guy. And then he said, oh, no, 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 no. Lower Dantian is on the perineum. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Middle Dantian is the solar plexus. Really? Okay. Upper yeah. Dantian is the brain. Yes. And I thought, well, at least the upper Dantian is the same, right? Similar. At least in the head. So I'm like, what? Lower Dantian is in the perineum. Yeah. Middle Dantian is solar plexus. I was like, all right. That's, quite, that's quite different. That's not like, I was thinking it's going to like be slightly a little bit further back or a little bit to the left, I don't know. No, nope, completely different locations. It is quite different. Completely different. And, and, I, and I thought, oh, this is odd. Yes. But I did it. Yeah. Did the practice, you know, did it. The practice was effective and I went into it. And then after this, I explored with other teachers. And then I found that the distinction between these two sets of locations was actually more common than I realized. Right, yeah. So I think that probably, I don't know, Two thirds, three quarters, place the dantian in the standard location of lower abdomen, heart, and head. Yep. But then about one third, one quarter, I don't know. It's especially any of the teachers from within the alchemical traditions. Yes. Alchemical qigong. Would you find any people doing the shantian stuff or the alchemical stuff placing it in the no. hutian positions? No. no. So, so it was really clear. It's the alchemical lines. Okay, so it's really clear if it's the shantian stuff. Yeah. The alchemical stuff, it is the perineum, the solar, solar plexus, plexus brain. And the head. Yep. The only variation is sometimes the solar plexus would drop a little bit lower with okay. some systems, but it would still basically be from the diaphragm to your navel, somewhere okay. in that region. John 1 kind of area. Yeah, that yeah. kind of area. John okay. 1, yeah, central stomach, red yes. 12. Red 12, yeah, yeah. So they would, they, would, they would have some variation in where they placed it, but always the Shantian system would basically, the lower Dantian was always the perineum. Okay. So I was very confused. Like, sorry, right on the perineum, so quite low. Yeah, Hui Yin. Hui Yin, so you really kind of draw that in. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. the base of Yin, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I... Practice them for a while, and I practice them, and then after a while you build up some courage, and you, you finally admit to your teacher, you've got no fucking idea why, <laughs> why the discrepancies, you know? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I ask the Hotian teachers, I say, well, why, why, if I, I got this other guy I trained with, you know, and he seems good, and, and he places a Dantian in this other location, right. he, he seems, seems all right, right, you know, and he's a master, and he places a Dantian in the other location, and I ask the Shantian systems teachers the, the same thing, yes. the opposite, yeah, why, why do they place them there? And they both told me the same, because the other guy's wrong. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> like, point blank, other guy's wrong. Yeah. So you've got this little dilemma here. Isn't it? It's like, oh, really? so I'm practicing, like, which one of these is wrong? Maybe they're both wrong. <laughs> Maybe they're both wrong, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's something, I never thought of that, actually. Yeah, shit, that could be a nightmare. You just wasted 38 years. <laughs> well, yeah, true. I'd have wasted that time anyway. doesn't matter. I'd, I'd have found something else to waste. Yeah. yeah. At least I wasted on something fun. Oh, that's it. I, d I think that... There is another, that actually, spanner in the works, there is another theory, oh, of course, <laughs> that's not a Dantian or Shantian, that the entire body is a Dantian, right? Okay, yeah, I've heard that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. I agree with that, but I think that's much further down the line. Yes. I think for a long time people weren't even working with one of these sets of locations. No, of course, yeah. And I didn't really uh, think it would be much of an issue, these two different locations of the Dantian. Until I came back to the West and actually I started to see that there was an increasing knowledge in the West that there were some people actually using the Shantian locations of the Dantian uh, as well. Okay, yeah. So actually uh, this was coming up over here in the West, not just in Asia. And 
And once again, whenever you asked anybody, they always just said, oh, because the other guy's wrong. Right. Or it's a misunderstanding or something like that. That's crazy that none of them kind of stopped thinking that maybe it's just another system. Well, or another way of doing something different. Yeah, I don't really know why people think the way they do. If it's not my way, it's wrong. Yeah, it is strange, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got this sort of polar, yeah. polarised view of everything. Many, 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 most people do it, right? You see, you know, it's just... Yeah, it's just bizarre. And, and I mean, there are many things that are wrong. Yeah, of course. But there's also quite a few things that are right. And, yes. And you're at a stage where I got these two teachers and or these two systems, and, and the teachers in both systems seemed good. They'd achieved great things with what they were doing, and yeah. their systems yeah. worked. So therefore, there was a very clear distinction between the ways they're working. Yeah. So there must have been a reason why they were both right. Yes, of course. Because it's not like one set of the teachers, the Shanti and the Hosin, were fucking useless. Yeah, that yeah, wasn't yeah. the they're, case. They're they were both, both really, good. really good. They were both good. So, so it's like, okay, what, what does this come down to? I won't bore you with a long story of my research and thought process and things like <laughs> that because you know, it, it was painstaking to try and take this apart and understand yeah, why yeah. it worked, right? And, but ultimately, what I came to realize in the end um, is that it's the difference between the Hotian and the Shantian systems. Okay, yes. Yeah. So... I'm just surprised that, you know, the, the two teachers had not kind of come across the other methods, the other systems. Oh, you'd be surprised how little... I don't want to come across as racist, but you'd be surprised how little actually Chinese teachers will communicate with each other. No, I get it also. And I guess... You know, that's racist. I don't, I want, to, I don't, want, to, <laughs> I don't want to generalize myself either, but I, I think a lot of them will sort of... They start a system mm. and they devote, devote themselves to that system. Yes. Isn't it? You know, which, yes. is, which is how that they get such good results from these systems because yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. really focus on nothing but they, their yes. whole mindset is that one system, isn't it? Yes. So, so I guess, yeah, that could be... There's a great strength to that, digging one hole very, very deep. Exactly. But yeah, it shouldn't make you close-minded to other methods. Yeah, well, that's the thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, and you see that in everything. I mean, I even... Well, martial arts is an example, isn't it? And Chinese medicine. Yeah. Chinese medicine, of course. Different styles will slag each other off. Absolutely. The hatred towards TCM within yeah, the that's, acupuncture that's world right. is quite rife these days, isn't it? It's getting bigger, isn't it? It is getting bigger. Yeah, yeah. It is. TCM is now spoken about like it's this oversimplified... It's like a kindergarten kind of... Yeah. If you're not familiar with this in the Chinese medicine world, because I think before people study Chinese medicine, not often they've only heard of TCM. And they think TCM is like one term for the entire of Chinese medicine. Yes, yes. But actually it's not. It's style. It's style I think that's yeah. fair to say. It's, it's relatively modern style, really. Yeah. Um, Developed from the older style. It's obviously based on, on, on the classics and stuff, but I guess yeah. it, was, it was structured and standardized relatively... Um, Recently, yeah, like in the last eighty years or so, and then you have other styles because you have like five element style, five element style, which is actually even more modern than TCM. Yes. Yeah, I would yeah. argue so modern that yeah, it's probably only about two generations old. Like 60s, 70s? Yeah, it's very, very yeah. modern. And then you've got stems and branches, stems and branches, which is also very, very modern. Yeah, people really? don't know that. Yeah, yeah, like, I mean, yeah, but I mean, yeah, all these styles that we're talking about, they're, they're modern. They were obviously based on very yeah. classical. The principles are old, but it was pieced back together. Yes. In fairly recent times, yeah, and yeah. and I don't think a lot of people know that. And then you have classical medicine, and yep. then you have increasingly you have Taoist medicine is being explained yes. more, and then you have Japanese acupuncture, you have Korean yeah, acupuncture. Yeah. So there's lots of different styles. All of these different styles, and then often TCM gets kind of demonized because they say it's too. Uh, I don't know actually. What do they say? It's too too prescriptive. Okay, not enough yeah. freedom in it, I suppose. Yeah, I mean we do get. This, I mean my argument to that is actually usually if that's what you think, you've had poor training in TCM. I agree. Okay, if I'm honest, because, I agree. I mean, I, I've 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 done a lot of I've done a lot of stuff with, with other styles as well, and, and I find TCM is is if you have a proper solid foundation and good yes. training in TCM, it has very few limitations. Yeah, and as but, you know, TCM wasn't my initial training. Yes, yeah. I, I yeah. came from a, a, what they would consider a more a classical system. Yes, and um, so. TCM, I came to later, and I didn't find any of the inherent weaknesses that other no, people are talking no. about. It, it's, it, they, they find that TCM is quite shallow in, in some of its explanations. It hasn't got that depth of, yeah. of sort of things. But actually, um, I think that's probably the training because I, I've, yeah. I've had, I mean, I've had good TCM training. I've had, I've had poor TCM training. You know, I've, I've, I've been trained in, in various different places. Yeah. Um, but the what I've considered a good solid TCM training was, <laughs> you, you did, did it, was a uh, was was. In, Incredible! It was, yeah. it was very deep, and it had all the understanding based on the classics, based on um, yeah. you know all the solid foundations. And ultimately, people chase the system when when it comes down to it, it's the skill of the practitioner. Of course. Funnily enough, if, yeah. if a practitioner is good, sometimes they can take a really basic system and make it work. Oh, that's it. If a practitioner is crap, they can have the most profound system and they'll still be crap. Yeah, yeah. People people do search for the most 
Of course. The most advanced... Anyway, we're going off topic. Yeah, but you know, yeah. but that's it. Yeah. The, the polarization of systems and yes. styles. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's, it's irrelevant, you know. It but it happens in every walk of life. Mm. I remember going, when I'm in America, I like to do American things. Fantastic. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> I've got a bucket list of things I'm ticking off in America. And I've got okay. like... I haven't done a Christian revival yet where they, they heal people oh, on yeah, stage yeah, yeah. And, and sort of... That'd you can good. walk! I haven't done any of that yet, but that's on my list still. That'd be good. If anyone listening to this knows of a good Christian revival where I can go in in a wheelchair and get fixed and healed and yeah. walk out of there, that would be wonderful. <laughs> but I haven't found a good one yet. I want a really crazy over the top one with neon sort of crucifixes around me yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Like cool stuff you only get Microphones in and speakers. Yeah, yeah. But I've done lots of crazy things Quiet so far. And and, like but one of my favorites was Monster Truck Rally. That was good. Which I went to with you, right? That was good. <laughs> and it was it was a bunch of rednecks watching. Uh, rednecks is probably racist as well, isn't it? Are they a race? <laughs> I don't know. I got no idea. I go, it's a cult- culturalist. Culture redneck is a race. <laughs> I don't have any idea. <laughs> no, we're all right. We're, we can get on off free on that one. Cause it's they're, a, a they're a breed. They're a breed. Breedist. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I'm very admirable. If if I, I love the rednecks, you want to be a redneck. If I could relive my life, right? If I could start again, you know, if like samsara throws me another another existence, I'm coming back as a redneck. Great. I'd be completely happy living in some dusty little backwater town, driving a pickup truck with a shotgun across my lap. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. would suit me. That would. I'd like that. The simple that life. would. Instead of all this alchemical Wait, it's nonsense. It's not too late. It's not too late. Do you not think so? I could chuck all this in. Yeah, definitely. I could, couldn't I? Get myself some... You could just do a summer of it. Get some overalls. Have a redneck summer. A redneck summer. I'd love that, actually. (laughs) Maybe I should do that. I'd take a year off teaching and go live as a redneck. So we went to this monster truck rally and saw all the people supporting the monster trucks. And the venom they had towards the opposite monster truck team. I I mean, I wasn't sure. I didn't know what the hell was going on. They were slagging the team. They were slagging the truck. They didn't drive properly. The truck was badly built. The colour scheme was wrong. That... (laughs) <laughs> so it's it happens in everything, right? Right from spirituality and chica yes. through to Chinese medicine, through to the shallowest, most superficial parts of life. Hey, mate, all monster truck rallies are not shallow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I apologise for monster truck <laughs> rally, but this polarisation is it, it's a bit of a nonsense, really. Yeah, yeah. And I think that people like to form sides. Yeah. I mean, that, that's tribal. That's that's survival. And it's happening in Qigong, and I think that that's what was happening with these teachers that were saying that the other way of working was completely wrong. Yes. Yeah. You know, and it, if you're still stuck in that mindset, then you end up kind of, you can't develop past a certain stage, you know, because you have to understand the strengths. Of, it's like you say, I, mean, yeah, I think it's absolutely great to devote yourself to a system because you're yeah. going to get the ap- absolute most out of it. But um, still keep an open mind, you know. Mm. You know. It's, it's, and try to understand why they do it their way. Yeah. Yeah, Why yeah. do they do that? I think it's important to try and understand. Okay, you know they they they're obviously they're well trained. They're doing something right. So yeah, w- you know, just try and understand what where they're coming from. So the conclusions I came to was that often what happens in Qigong is a lot of the the way that we work is how does your mind interact with your body. That's really what it comes down okay. to, right? With both systems. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Primarily the Hotian, I guess. Mm, yeah, primarily the Hotian. Yes. There, yeah, yeah. There's another way of working with the Shantian as well. But yeah. it's really about how the intermind interacts with your body, right? So if you look at the the locations for the Dantian in the Hotian system, where are they? Lower abdomen, okay. heart, yeah. and head. Yeah. So what they're trying to do in the Hotian systems is maximize your chi. So what uses up your chi? Provide primarily, it's your mind, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean... You have the internal and external disease, yes. and Qigong, a lot of it is working on the internal Inter- disease, which is yeah. why so many medical Qigong books talk about your emotions and the spirits mm. and yeah, things, yeah. right? So what you have is you have three locations. You have the head. Oh, the idea is within uh, classical Chinese thought that if you're having an intellectual process... It's that cerebral stuff going on, isn't it? The intellectual learning and, and, and yeah. thinking, generating thoughts. Study or yeah. whatever, or, or working out like a... Problem, problem yep. solving, okay. which yep. is a lot of life, right? Yeah, yeah. Life is like rumination, problem. overthinking, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, life is problems to be solved after problem to be solved after problem to be solved, right? Yeah. And so yeah. it's very intellectual. And if you're doing that kind of stuff, that's upper than ten. Yeah, then your mind, the location of your mind, will jump to the head. Mm. Is there? I mean, and you can see that, isn't it? You know, as a Chinese medicine practitioner, you see people that come in. You you can literally see their chi is all in their head. They mm. you can see that people are all in mm. their head. You know, they're very cerebral people, but also just the way their posture is. Even they're all everything's risen to the yes. head. And if you get a complete scholar, 
yeah. someone who's made their whole life out of deep ruminations and thinkings about okay. intellectual yeah. things. I mean, their, their body coordination is terrible. Yes. Yeah, it's, yeah, literally, it's literally like their mind is not yeah, in the body. don't know where their arms and legs are. Yeah, yeah. They do. yeah, yeah. You yes. can see them walk, right? Yes. Yeah. You watch a, a university scholar walking around, it just looks stiff and un- like they're clumsy. Because they've got no yeah, idea where they're wearing it. Right? Yeah. No, they're just carrying their brain around. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. It's an important organ. <laughs> it's important, yeah, it's an important <laughs> organ. So, if that happens too much, obviously energy rises to the head. Okay, and, yeah. And that's your thought is all in the head. Yeah, and we know that, like, you know, you get a headache if you study too much. I think so, yeah. yeah. And things like that, yeah. you know, and eye strain, and not yeah. just from looking at screens, but also from concentrating. Absolutely. Energy rushes to the head, right? So that's location one. And then location two is the chest, the heart. Yeah. Most people would understand that the emotions come from the middle down to so the, the heart. Yeah, yeah, the emotional center, isn't it? Yeah. So all emotional thought, all emotional processing is done through the middle down to That's right. From yeah. a Chinese medicine perspective, yeah. Yeah, of course, yeah. Okay. So if you have an emotional upset, I mean, palpitations aren't uncommon. Yeah. Or even pain in the chest. Yeah. Like pain heartbreak. Absolutely. It's called heartbreak for a yeah, reason, right? It doesn't yeah. mean it broken your heart. Literally, yeah, that would yeah, be fatal. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it puts pain in your chest, like a pain tightness, in the chest, right? fullness in the chest. Yeah. Some, some people uh, experience emptiness in the chest, like a like a hollow. Like okay, yeah. there, you know. So yeah. it's all these experiences are, are in the chest. Yeah, yeah. You know, the effect of breathing. You can go as far as panic attacks, obviously. And even the other locations for emotional stuff is often like in the solar plexus or something, which yeah. is a little bit lower, but still within that region, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. But you feel the emotions in your body lower down yes so the mind is said to have a location if you're having an emotional experience often it's located in the in chest the middle. in the middle yeah. dantian right so we, we even have this in sayings in english you know when they say do you think with your head or your heart okay yeah yeah i mean they're implying the same thing right yeah your head is your intellectual thought it's yeah. in your head and your heart is your emotional yeah drive. it's in your heart it's in yeah. your chest right what does so, your heart feel what does your head feel yeah so they understood it and then other phrases do you have a heavy heart or okay. are you light-hearted? Yes, yeah. A heavy heart makes you feel oppressed and yeah, full. Low. Feeling low. But, I mean, in the chest, right? Okay, you feel yeah, like literally heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah when you're light-hearted, it feels like Open your chest rises, yeah, yeah. opens up and expands, expands right? rises, yeah, of course. Yeah, so we, we did kind of understand this within the English culture as well. It's not it's not yeah. such an alien concept to people. No. It no, shouldn't yeah. be. What did I hear the other day? It was on there. It's not even low snake on. It's about bad mood, temper... Spleen chi. With the spleen? Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, they, they talked about someone having too much spleen, didn't they? That's right, yeah. Well, yeah, big, big spleen chi. Yeah, okay, spleen that's right, chi. yeah. Because obviously in Chinese medicine, you know, spleen chi the, or the, the middle chi, the earth chi, is often translated for the, the temperament mm-hmm. as well, especially you know, bad, bad mood would be an excessive excessive spleen chi, essentially. Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah, so that was quite interesting. Again, middle... middle. Yeah, middle John Wan, right? John Wan, not, yeah. not that far underneath the heart, right? That's it, yeah. So you, that would all, to me, fall under the middle dantian. Yes. And then you have the third type of thought, which we might call gut thought. Gut thought. Gut, gut instinct. Feeling. Gut feeling. Yeah, yeah, gut feeling. Or sometimes there's an old phrase in English, isn't there? Na- navel gazing. Never heard of that one. Yeah, I hadn't heard of it till recently. And then <laughs> it's one of those things, you, you hear it a few times and then it comes up. It a bit pervy, doesn't it? I even talked, heard um, Theresa May use the phrase recently. She was sick of the politicians navel gazing. Well, maybe it's a creepy thing. It could be, but it's a bit rich because she spent the last two years navel gazing. But okay. you know what I mean? It means to like spend too much time just wasting your time and pondering oh, really? the navel. Yeah. Okay, right. So probably it's based in like, I would guess, meditation type yeah, stuff. But sure. they use it now to mean sort of oh, interesting. It's wasting time thinking or something like <laughs> that, you know. But when I so, waste time, I don't think about my navel. You don't think about your navel? No. You think about food. Yeah, usually. Usually, isn't it? <laughs> they say that most men think of sex every how many seconds? Is it six or seven? I don't know. You just think about food. Every five. <laughs> every five. <laughs> so the gut instinct is more I shouldn't say instinct, but that's it it's gut more feeling. Yeah. yeah, it's more centered, it's more based. It's not yeah. overly intellectual, it's not overly emotional. It's it's centered and yeah. it's sunken really, isn't it? It's sunken. Yeah, right? When we talk about sinking the chi, moving the chi down towards the lower dan tian. Yes. Sinking the chi. You know, you're, if your sink, if your chi is sunk, you yep. can think more without emotion and without overthinking or exactly. over intellectualizing things. So you're you're essentially in the lower dan tian. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And that's what they call the the center really. Yes. Everybody, you're centered, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that that. To me, is a large part of not the entire of how they work, but a large part of it, right? Yes. Because you're trying to maximize the potential for the Hotian energy, the energy you have right now. So me as a 38-year-old male, I have a certain maximum amount of energy I can have. Okay. But what's going to take my energy 
primarily the internal causes that will take my energy are overthinking yeah. or emotions. Yes. So if you have to mentally concentrate for a long time, you know, because you just want sugar and junk food quite yeah, often, right? Like yeah. to, to fuel that, you need the energy, right? Yeah, You're burning up your energy. Sure, yeah. yeah. And, and like people go to work and they get wiped out even just yeah. working in an office. They're not doing any exercise. No, but it's all that mental, I mean, obviously, mental energy they're getting in Chinese medicine, it's the, 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 uh, the faculties of the mind consume yeah. chi and blood, right? Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, exactly. The blood which drains the spleen chi, which is really your ho tian chi. Yep. You know, your foundation chi is, is, uh, is founda- the foundation of your acquired chi is the, the spleen. And that's exactly right, because that's the yeah. energy we're trying to maximize in ho tian chi gong. Yes. Yeah. And if you look at the other main cause for losing your energy is emotions. Yeah. So if you're having a, a heightened emotional state over a long period of time, it drains you. Hugely, yeah. I mean, you imagine being chronically worried, scared, or angry, or any other emotion over a long period of time. Of course, it takes your energy. It's yeah. exhausting. Yeah. So we can't maximize the chi in our body until we get out of those two states, right? Yeah, yeah. This is, for me, also why you shouldn't ever use the imagination in Qigong. Because you're using up the the Because you're using the upper dantian. Yeah, it's yeah, a course. cognitive process. So it's actually burning the chi rather than... Yeah rather than creating no, that it, makes a lot of sense. rather than maximizing it. So what you do is you try to take your mind out of the upper dantian and out of the middle dantian to the lower dantian. Yeah. Yeah. So this is why the mind goes to the lower dantian. Yeah, that's the importance of... It's a, not really a dantian, right? Of course. Yeah, but it's, a, it's, a, like it's the, lower, <laughs> the lower field of chi. The, the sea exactly. Of chi. Yeah. And they've borrowed the name dan, the elixir field, even though you're not building the elixir. Because it's more of a location pinpoint. Because it's a location, just yeah, like the Ming Men or the Yongchuan or whatever. And that makes sense because it's, it's more absolutely vital that we build chi, especially in that area, to help to stabilize the mind and stabilize the emotions. Yeah, of right? course. Because, I mean, a real simple fact, if you are tired... Yes. You're going to be a bit irritable, snappy, and can't yeah. think straight. I, that there is one of the most basic arguments for more qi. Yes. Because yeah. there's, there's, a, there's a pervading view now in Qigong where we shouldn't want more qi. Almost really? like having... Yeah, yeah. Like what, having... What do they say? Why? Well, I've been giving lectures to people that are annoyed when I say you need more qi. Yes. Because it's almost like greed. Because the word oh, more, okay. it, and it's very sort of spiritual no, it's, it's and alternative people don't like greed but I'm saying you need more chi not that you need more cars yes or more houses <laughs> or more gold How jewelry you be so greedy <laughs> yeah I'm saying you need more chi other people need that chi <laughs> <laughs> the starving Africans who haven't got enough chi how dare you want more or something you know so they but they don't understand that you can't stabilize the mind without enough chi no no not at all and the easy example is yeah if you are tired yeah, you you're grumpy as fuck. Snappy as fuck. It's yeah, just like, you, yeah, you try to do a difficult, stressful thing with well, no sleep and no energy. Yeah, you're gonna be a right bastard. Yeah, completely. You sleep really well. You have got an abundance of energy. You, you're feeling good, and then you deal with that stressful you situation. You're a, a rock in the storm. No, you really, you really are. Because yeah, you've got that, enough chi. That, that, that stabilize the mind. Stabilizing the chi. Uh, well, yeah, the, the chi stabilizes yes. the shen. Yeah, yeah, of course. And to me, that's kind of it, clear. Yeah, it's clear and obvious. <laughs> it's from clear a, and obvious. Yeah, I guess so. But, but people, yeah. maybe people don't get enough sleep. So you, to me, you can't stabilize the mind, whether it be meditation or mindfulness, because yes. I separate the two, right? Meditation or mindfulness or Qigong. Yeah. You can't stabilize the mind unless you have the energy to support the stabilization of the mind. Yeah, I think this, I mean, a lot of people come to us, and you know, more so yourself as well, because of the, the Neigong, they're asking advice, how can I, how can I stabilize my emotions or how can I, uh, yeah. how can I progress in meditation or, or mindfulness or, you know, some of these practices. And uh, the answer is, it, it's annoying to people, but the answer is, oh, you need to go and build more chi. Yeah, it's it's the basis yeah. of ho tian work. And also, you know, I've, <laughs> had this, I've had this recently from quite a few people, uh, quite a lot of people actually, is, um, you know, as a Chinese medicine lecturer, how can I, how can I protect myself in clinic against others? You know, um, my patient's energies and things like this. You know, this is a really common question. And again, again, the, the answer is always, you need to build chi. You need to build chi. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's that's the, that's, the, that's the only way forward. If if you want to protect yourself against others, yeah. You know, if you've got a clinic full of you seeing twenty people a day doing energy work, or you're seeing people with illnesses, with or yeah. especially um, mental illnesses such as depression, need, I mean, you need more chi than they do. Of course, you need more yeah. chi, but not even just but more chi than they do. You need a, you need more chi than. You're 20 patients have got, right? Because you've got a day of it. You've got a day yeah, of people yeah, coming to you. Yeah, that's 20 people's worth of energy. You've yeah, got to have more. 20 than. people pouring, pouring yeah, out their, 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 their issues and stuff. And that's what you're there to, to deal with. And you've got to be that solid rock to be able to help deal with them. Yeah, that's right. And uh, the way to do that, there's people People want, I don't know, some people like want answers like, 
what crystals do I need to have in my room? Oh, sure. You know, okay. you know, or, or, or what what talismans do I need to to paint on the sure. doors and and or what rituals? Should do I, I wear need a to, lead suit? So wear a lead suit. Yeah, yeah it's hazmat suit or something. <laughs> yeah, or, or you know, what kind of dance do I need to do after each patient and shit like this? Yeah, sure. The answer is just you need to build chi because this and is you chi could argue that maybe there are supplementary methods. Of course, yeah, there is. I mean, like, there's all sorts of things. Amethyst is quite cleansing for a space, but it's only what, like 2% of yeah, the problem they're, they're, they're solved. They're supplements, right? aren't they? They're supplements. Yeah. Ultimately, if you don't You also have... need a big amethyst. You can't put it around your neck. Yeah, I've seen the amethyst you've got. No <laughs> you wouldn't want that around your you neck. You need a truck to move it. Like the hunchback of Notre Dame. Yeah, you need a truck. Uh, pre fire. <laughs> <laughs> pre fire. Oh, yeah. He's gone now. Let's move on. Yeah. Um, but I think, uh, I think yeah, without, without the chi, they're going to do shit. You know, those, those methods. Yeah. Or well, those supplements, whatever you're using, not going to mm-hmm. do anything if you haven't got no. that chi to to stabilize yourself. You need a high shen and high chi. Yes, yeah, high shen. High and, chi. and and that the basis of that really is how hoti and qigong works. And that's building that chi. So you have to get so the the fundamental skill of of hoti an post heaven postnatal qigong is to get the mind to the lower dantian. Okay. Right. That that's it to get the mind to lower dantian. Yeah. And I'll tell you right now, the thing that you can't do. And is this, and this is very important, you can't place the mind on the lower dantian. Okay. It's not possible. You can't place the mind on the lower dantian, and immediately that's going to sound strange to some people. You have to sink the mind yeah. to the dantian. It's very different. Yeah. It's completely different. It's a very yeah. different I, quality. I think, that, I think that, that, that term sinking is actually really important as well, because yep. also... Um, I oh, mean, I see, as opposed to descending. Yes, because for, for I mean, those who do Chinese medicine, I guess, will know this. Because especially with with herbal medicine, we have the we the actions of of qi. You know, the movements of qi. We have ascending, we have descending, we have sinking, we have floating. Yeah, you know, they're all different movements and directions of qi. So when we say sinking the qi from a from a negong perspective, we don't mean sinking as in lowering or descending. Sinking means drawing inwards towards the lower dantian. Yeah, right? exactly. And I think that's very important to understand. The, the dantian is the bottom of the well. Exactly, yeah. So it's very important to understand the term sinking doesn't mean sink the chi to your feet. Well, that's descending. Exactly, yeah. So, so yeah, from, from so the language we use, we know that's yeah. descending, right? So sometimes in, for example, Tai Chi, we descend the chi. Yes. And it will sink to the dantian. Okay. Yes. So, but but the, the words are very distinct, right? Yes. Yeah, very different. And there's a, there's a very the different yeah. terms, sink and descend. So I think I think yeah, the, the, yeah, you need to differentiate the difference between descending, which mm-hmm. is literally just down, nice and simple. Yes. Descending means goes down. Yeah. Sinking means draws inwards mm-hmm. to the dantian. Ascending exactly. just means going up, obviously. Whereas floating means going outwards to the surface of the body. Yeah, more like spreading. Spreading, yeah, yeah. expanding, kind of this, this moving outwards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, spreading. So yeah, the, the sinking is, is is very important. And it, there, that that quality you you say floating, yes, expanding out, is essentially it's a little different from Chinese medicine theory a little bit. Oh, okay, a so tiny bit within the gun. No, no, with regards to the emotions, because in qigong they say that the emotions cause the qi to float. Okay. Yeah. Does that mean like a scattering? Yeah, scattering, like okay. a spreading of the chi, yes. which is obviously yeah. the opposite of sinking. Yes. Yeah. So you can't sink the chi if you are in an emotional, emotional state. state. Yeah. yeah, it's not possible. No, no, it's not. And so if you look at like what happens when you place the mind on the Dantian in Hotian systems, yeah. is you're still actually using an action. And an action, even if it's a mental action, placing yeah. is a mental action. It's quite aggressive, right? It's like yeah. place my mind there. there yeah. What I'm doing is I'm using the intellectual control of the upper dantian. Yes. So actually, yeah. even though your mind might be located, your awareness is located in the lower dantian, you're still in the upper you're dantian. You're still in the upper dantian. So you're still in the you're causing action. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of... It's so you're not sinking. It's really having to step back and having that nonchalance about it, isn't it? Yes. Because when you relax yeah. the mind, yes. the weird thing is, it's like your mind has a weight to it. And when you yeah. relax, yeah. it starts to sink. To sink. It's your mental action that's holding your mind up. And when you yeah, relax, it is, sinks, and then it gets to the dantian. And this is incredible, isn't it? And this, this is where the, you know, you, you'd bring in the ting and the song. Yes. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Ting, if you're not familiar, ting means to listen. Mm. But it, it rather refers to a semi-passive quality of absorbing the mind yeah. through the body yes, in Qigong, yeah, at least yeah. in Qigong. So that's ting. It's, it's, it's kind of, yeah. And song means to release so it can sink. Exactly, yeah. So you need the song to release, but that ting kind of, it's almost given that, that, that sharpness and that kind of, it's not tension in the mind, No. but it's keeping the structure of the mind to allow it to do that sinking. Yeah, right? if you song without ting, yes. 
you descend the qi. Yes, yeah. If you song with ting, you sink the qi. You sink the qi. Yeah. yeah. So lots of people are quite good at song. Yes. But they're not very good at ting. Yeah. So what happens is they drop their energy to the feet yeah. and then they go flaccid. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you put it into on a physical level, if you uh, if you sung without ting, you will yes. collapse into a heap on the floor. That's right, yeah. Whereas if you if you sung with ting, you can relax enough so the tissues start to relax and release. Yet yep. you keep your you keep you keep that tension and that, that structure, and so the energy you, you goes down right. to the dantian. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It sinks to here. Yeah. So that's uh, interesting about that. Yeah, it's really important not to place the mind on the lower. Yeah, yeah. It's an aggressive action. It's and I, I made that mistake gonna... for years and yeah. years and years. Oh, and I mean, years. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And when I finally learned, oh shit, I can just sink the mind, and it will sink under its own weight. Yes. All of a sudden, my I use energy in the term of like vitality or how much energy you okay. feel. Yes. Suddenly went through the roof. Suddenly just exploded. It's like boom. All yeah. of a sudden, my body had all of this extra yeah. energy. It's like whoa! I feel alive, more alive. All this energy. Because suddenly you just. You're not using that energy to, to sink it. I'm, and I'm not using the intellectual mind. Yes, yeah. 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 That's it's, what I mean, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're not, not, it's not the action. Once the intellectual mind is gone and the emotional mind is gone, because I've got past the upper dantian and the middle dantian to the lower dantian, then I tend to think in a different way, yeah. in a way that's not burning up chi. And all of a sudden you have access to all of that energy you were using up. It's amazing how much energy you use up thinking. Yeah. It really is. Some more than others. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's true though, isn't it? You know, it's the amount of energy we use. Yeah. And this is how Qigong changes your mind, right? Yes. Like people think it's just about, I guess, relaxation or something. Right. Being yeah. calm, you know. But it's not. It's because, say you have your whole life thinking really intently. Maybe you work in like a top science lab or something like that. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, or you've got a, a cognitive job. Then... What's happened is because you spend so much of your time up here that after a while your mind's location, in inverted air commas, yeah. will learn to latch on to that place. So that becomes your default place to operate yeah, from. Yeah, so yeah. then you're always operating from that place. And that's most people. And that's the same with the, the, the emotional as well. Yeah, if you're people. always in an emotional state, your mind will learn to lock onto the chest, right? Yes, so it's going to react always in an emotional way. Yeah, and then you've got your two types of people. Head people, heart people. Yeah. Head people tend to get stress and burnout and migraines. Yeah. Heart people tend to get really depleted energy. Yeah, yeah. And then sadness. So where are the gut, gut people? Uh, <laughs> they need to train to get that, right? Yeah, Because <laughs> what happens with Qigong, I mean, some people naturally, of course, but yeah, there's yeah, always yeah. Some exceptions. People, some people are naturally... Yeah. What would you call them? Grounded. Well, they guess. don't get drawn to Qigong usually. They don't yeah. need to <laughs> go somewhere else. Yeah. 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 So the, what happens is then you spend enough time focusing on the well, I sorry, sinking to the lower dantian. Yeah. After a while, you know, you're practicing every day. You got your regular practice. Your mind learns. Oh, this is where I should be anchored. Yes. Because yeah. you're spending a higher proportion of your time there. Then when you walk away from the practice, that becomes the default place it's, for yeah, your mind. Yeah, and it's amazing. Uh, you know, it's it's amazing when that happens. Yeah, so people think they're karma, and all right, they are karma, I suppose. Yeah. But actually, what they are is not overly intellectual mm. and not overly emotional when those two states aren't required. Yeah. It doesn't mean you can't experience intellectual thought because you'd be a bit of a div. Yeah, and yeah. It doesn't mean you can't experience emotions because you'd be a robot, but you're not locked in those patterns. And it doesn't mean you can react to certain situations in a, yeah. in a very kind of clear yes. or clear headed because you know, your head's not full of. Trap. thoughts and stuff exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, not, you're not thinking on emotion and as a byproduct you've also got a lot more vitality yes because you're maximizing yeah. the energy that you have the potential for because yeah. you're only using the whole energy you're using whatever energy you have the potential for at that yeah. moment and it's not being burnt up by your mind or your emotions but, I mean this takes a lot of practice yeah yeah you know, but, but if you understand mechanics yeah, of it yeah. not that hard right no I mean, I mean I've touched on it yeah yeah I've touched, it's, it's not a, something that I can personally it's not something I personally live my life doing. No. By default. You know, I, I admit that. It's, it, it's difficult, but I mean, <laughs> but, but, I've, but I've certainly touched on it and, and, mm. uh, and it's when you're in there, it's incredible. You know, but it, the key is, is maintaining the practice and staying there. Yes. You know, that's the thing. So that there, that's the basis of Hotian Qigong system, which is, in my opinion, most Qigong systems that people encounter. Because yeah. then what you do is you combine that with movements. And look how uh, look and how moves important that energy through the body. Yeah, look how important and how profound that can be. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. life changing. Absolutely, yeah, for yeah, a lot of people. Hugely. Yeah, definitely. So Hotian systems maximize that energy, and then through various exercises and movement, move the 
not I don't want to say extra energy you've got because it's the energy you should have if your mind and your emotions aren't in the way. Yes, yeah. And then that energy moves to the body more efficient, aren't you? Really? Yeah, and then it can go to where it's needed. Yes, the heart, the kidneys, the liver, so the yeah, lungs, exactly. the spleen. So the functioning of the body, yes, has got the energy that that it, you know. Basically, you haven't got one particular organ that's overusing your energy. That's right. Yeah. 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 And then then your vitality goes up. Hey, presto, qigong. Qigong. Qigong, gong means mastery of your qi. Yes. You have achieved qigong, right? You have achieved skill with your qi. So those are the Ho Tian systems. Ho Tian, acquired. So to summarize, to me, the three Dantian locations they're choosing are three ways in which the location of the mind can interact with the body to give you three different types of thought. Yes. With the third type of thought, the lower Dantian being the one that ultimately enables you to maximize your vitality, your personal vitality. Yes. It's simple. Simple, of course it's simple. The last part of the Hotian systems is when enough energy is built in the lower abdomen, in that, that region, your mind is centered there enough. Once you have enough vitality, it starts to clean the other two locations, right? Okay, yeah. So then what happens is when your mind is centered long enough in the lower abdomen, I guess you could say that your heart is left alone. Your middle dantian is like not bothered, it's left alone. So it starts to clean itself. And then the field of your heart opens. Yes. And the result is you feel like everything opens up and spreads. Yeah. And they call that opening the middle dantian. Yep. Then what happens is the upper dantian is left alone long enough that your mind can sort of defrag, okay. sort itself out like a shitty computer getting yeah, cleaned. Yeah, yeah. And then it feels like your upper dantian opens because when you're free of stress, you feel light. When you're stressed, you feel dense. Yes. So then they say the upper dantian opens. So this is why when you focus on the lower Dantian or you listen and you sink your mind to it in the Hotian systems, after a while, you start to feel light and free in the other places. And classically, yes. they would say you're progressing from lower to middle to upper Dantian okay. in your practice, right? Because okay. the way it's opening and becoming more efficient. Yeah, and the result is lots of vitality, movement it's of it's chi, it's like the Lower Dantian is literally, like the, the way you know, when I've been in practice and the thing, it literally feels like a ho- hoover, doesn't it? Yeah. Like drawing the shit in, you know. Yeah, that's right. Well, actually, that's because you're doing the Shantian system. Oh, shit. <laughs> it could work in the other way, right? I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> well, maybe let's look at that. Let's look at the Shantian systems. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so those are the Hotian systems. Yeah. So the the Shantian systems are uh, a little bit more uh, complex because they use, they're trying to access the energy that you have um, inherently within the Jing. So yep. instead of using the, the postnatal chi or the energy within your body, yes. they're trying to use the energy that's can, the potential energy within your essence, which is essentially gifted to you at birth. Yep. So you're accessing reserves of energy that you should have had as a child. Because yes, I don't know, sometimes people don't realize that sometimes people think an adult has more energy. Like you peak your strength right, yeah, because sure. you're stronger, right? Yes. Yeah. But actually a baby has more energy, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah it's because like, but it's been used to grow. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, imagine all that concentrated energy, right? You yeah. The, the energy needed yeah. to get from this microscopic thing to... If you could get access the energy that you have, well, there is a way, the Shantian system, yes. you can access the yeah. energy you had as a baby and have it as an adult. I mean, that's a lot of... I mean, look, just look at the growth of energy, development right? in the first yeah, yeah. Sort of 10 years of life or whatever. It's you think you get that energy if you ate a baby? I'm not sure. Uh, let's look at that. <laughs> it's getting a bit dark, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we go off on tangents, but that's not. Like, we don't want to go down that way. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to talk about Chinese herbal medicine and that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's some dodgy ingredients in that, right? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you only have to watch kids playing. They got a shit ton of energy, oh, right? Yeah. Annoying little bastards running Absolutely. up and down the airplane and yeah. stuff like that. So you have to run after them. <laughs> yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's it. Is that's the biggest challenge? You as a dad, is it? Yeah. Trying to herd cats, that's getting it, your yeah, kids that's it. safely in one place at any time. <laughs> yeah, they got a lot of energy, and we want to access that energy, and that energy is not stored in our body anymore because, as a, you know, myself, yes, uh, I don't have that energy anymore. Not within my acquired system. That energy has been used up. Yeah, producing growth and, and development. You know, and learning processes, right? Yeah, yeah. But that potential energy is said to traditionally be still stored in the jing. Okay. So my essence has the potential for yeah. because I mean we, we do need. We need reserves of energy if shit hits the fan, right? Well, yeah. You know, the body does store <coughs> huge, huge amounts of energy yes. for when shit hits the fan. 
You know, so that, that, I guess that's what we're tapping into. Yeah, and it, yeah. it does come from the gym because after you've had a really stressful experience, you've had to burn up that energy. Well, yeah, yeah. You get it directly hits the gym. Kidney that's, fatigue, right? Yeah, yeah. But oh, yeah. I mean, you, you see, don't you? When, when people do go through huge amounts of traumas, huge amounts of shock, they, they go grey overnight or... Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, this is because that you, know, you do tap into that gym to get yes. you out of trouble. You know? So it is there. It's there. It is and there. If, and if we, if we can find it and harness it in a very specific way, yeah, yeah. then it can be used for huge amounts of spiritual development and okay. growth, which yes. is ultimately what alchemy was about. And what this cultivation practices are for, right? Yeah, because you don't have enough energy in your Hotian state, unless you're a child, of course, yes, but yeah. most children of that age aren't practicing. Right? Yeah. But you don't have enough energy in your body to form the elixir. Okay. Yeah. But you do have enough energy in your gene to form the elixir. Right. Even if your jing is like worn out because you're old. Yep. Or you've, you know, mistreated yourself over a long period of time. Yep. Then you still have the potential in the jing. Okay. Yeah, it's sure. still there somewhere, you know? Like the potential. It's like a seed of your essence is there somewhere yeah. inside the jing. Is that why there's an emphasis so much on consolidation on jing? Yeah, within, within Shantian systems. Um, there always has to be consolidation of the Jing first, right? And they, they even though the Shantian systems work with the essence, work with the Jing, and they have various tools to do it, most people will know there's some prerequisite qualities right. that have to be there to preserve yeah, sure. the Jing. So normally people will know there's restrictions on sexual activity and overwork and exercise, uh, mental activity and things that need to be done. Also just stimulation and, and even down to food, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Just, you know, if you have exciting food kills the gin. Exciting your food kills the gin. Yeah, a nice bland diet you yeah. want. Rice. Right, just right. Just that's rice. It. You wouldn't last very long. You'd be very unhealthy after a bit. It's got to be white rice as well. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> none, none, of, none of that uh, wheat stuff. <laughs> no, no, no. Nutrients are exciting. None of that wild rice. Yeah, well, you, well, you do. Like, joking aside, you have very simple... Before you go into an alchemy retreat or a Shantian practice retreat, I should yes. say, like uh, yeah, anything yeah. based around that... The advice is usually that you have a very restricted, maybe not as simple as just white rice, but you have a restricted diet yeah, yeah. for a period of time and you don't have any sexual activities. You have the, they normally advise like 100 days without any yeah. sexual activity prior to doing that training so it's that the jing has time to well, be left it? alone. You know? so, it's not, yeah, it's not easy for some, is it? No, no. It, I mean, no, it's difficult. I, I've if had, you're in a, you know, if you, especially if you're in a relationship as well. You know? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I've had people who've had relationship problems because they want to do the 100 days and yes, uh, yes. Of, of no sexual activity before a treat. And I've said to them, you know, like, come on, there's, there's a balance with family life as well. There's a yes. harmony. Like, I mean, what maybe, do you want to, you, you got to have that choice, haven't you, really? Yeah, restrict the activity. Yes, be sensible, yeah. but not... Because like other types of stimulation, you know, cause marital like, problems. You know, so we've we got a we got a, a good friend Ra who who is yes. hugely into his his artwork and, and and people that know him will know about how much he's into his artwork and his music yeah, yeah. and yeah, and yeah, he was crazy he was, level. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he's yeah. an incredible, absolutely amazing artist. Yes, um, a musician. And uh, when he was doing this um, hundred days, that was one thing he he couldn't because he enjoyed music so much because he enjoyed <laughs> art so much he, he couldn't he couldn't listen to music or he couldn't he yeah really, sure yeah. because that was so I mean not stimulating in that way I, I yeah don't sure know. <laughs> yeah 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 but do, do you know what I mean it was uh, we were teaching a course together and, and it's yeah. like uh, hey Roy let's put some music on he's like no 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 I'm off music at the moment he's like, off music what do you mean you're off it must music? have been hard being out in public for music him. oh yeah well no that's, that's the thing though isn't it to do these things in modern day life it's very hard. Yeah, it is hard. Yeah, it is because yeah. you're not supposed to. Like, if you're preparing for a Shantian practice, you're not supposed yeah. to be around any sexual stimulation. Okay. But that can be quite difficult because you only have to walk in the street and look at billboard posters well, that's and it. the yeah, sexuality yeah. thrust right in your face, right? I mean, yeah. you yeah. can't deny that that's no. sex sells. Yeah. So it, it's quite difficult. It is difficult. I mean, but any stimulation of any kind, you know, you just walk down the street and it's just, you, we're bombarded by lights and noise. Yeah. And, and it's, yeah, we, we do live in, in quite a crazy environment. So, yeah, yeah. So some of these you know, like hundred day um, practices and, and jing jing practices and stuff are, are difficult. I think. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. so. So, but it, but the jing is has to be like if you want to understand it a simple way, I suppose you just leave the essence alone for a little you'd bit. Let so it, you'd let it become still, right? Yeah, it's almost like when you want your mind to become still and without yeah. stress, right? You want your essence, your vitality, to be without stress. So for if a while. you think it was like a, like you know, sometimes we talk about rivers and lakes and stuff. You want it just to be calm. The water yeah. has to be calm, isn't it? The wind has to go, so the waves disappear. There you go. Yeah, so everything's calm. Mm. Then from there, what happens is we need to access the energy contained within that jing within Shantian systems. And this is why they go straight to the perineum. Yes. This is why the lower dantian is the perineum. Okay. Right? Because 
your essence is said to be stored around the kidneys. Yeah. Especially in Chinese medicine, practitioners will know the connection between the kidneys and the jing, right? Yeah. But from here, it actually travels down to the huai yin point to the perineum. Well, I was about to say, I mean, has this got much to do with the obviously congenital channels? Because it's the perineum, mm. which is where, especially the root chung, uh, root chung, the, the root chung and <laughs> you are said to really emerge. That was a combination uh, of three, was it? I don't know what the fuck it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the ren, the do, and what the chung. The, the root yeah. chung. Um, but yeah, yeah, the, the ren, chung, and the do, they, they emerge in this area. Right? That's right, yeah. They all go down to here, right? So, yes. so because they're all emerging from the root of the jing. Yes. So even, uh, like, jing is not your sexual energy, right? No, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. That, that's it, a it, common it, mistake. It, in it can manifest, does it? But it's The sexual not. energy is one aspect of it, right? Yes, yeah, the more yang aspect of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it, it comes out of it. So from the perineum, uh, obviously, like that energy from there gets turned into sexual desires yes. and things like this, right? Yeah. And and this energy that we're trying to access on the perineum is why we then have a lot of work with the perineum in Shantian systems okay. to try to essentially move the jing towards the location of the chi in the lower in, well, in the lower abdomen yeah, okay. region, so the two can meet each other. Yeah, and this is called the furnace and the cauldron touching each other, right? The right. ding and the loo so in our ding, chemical terms. So the ding is the cauldron. The cauldron. Yeah. And the, the loo is that the furnace. The furnace. Yeah. The reason to me it's called the furnace is because when you access that energy in the perineum correctly, yeah. which can be tricky, but when yes. you access it, like you actually, you touch that potential for like childlike vitality, if you like, the vitality you had as a kid, you okay. know, which to me, they're kind of pointing out in Taoism when they say return to a child. Yes. And people misunderstand it and think you wander around like some kind of idiot, <laughs> you know, playing with toys and watching Pokemon or something. But it's not, it doesn't mean that. Like, it doesn't mean like act like a dork. What it's meaning is returning to the vitality of a child, accessing the jing yeah, that's at the base of yeah. the body. You know, it's not talking yeah, about how you act, it's what you do, right? Yeah. And when you touch that jing and you, and you move it up, you access so much energy yeah. that the body can't process it. Okay. And the result is heat. Yeah. Yeah. Because heat is developed from resistance. Too much yes, energy yeah. moving something. Like, like a cheap electrical yeah. item with too much electricity going through it, right? It's a light bulb, right? That's why it lights up. That's how yeah, it gets yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because heat is going through the filament. You can call it that probably. <laughs> That's probably technically wrong, bit of isn't wire. it? A bit of wire. I've got no idea. A bit yeah. of curvy wire. But yeah, things get hot when there's resistance. Yes. Yeah. So what happens is all that extra energy, extra energy builds up inside the lower abdomen and all that resistance is there because it's like an electrical circuit not yes. used to processing that energy. So the result is heat. Okay. So it's coming off. So they call this the firing or burning process in okay. alchemy, right? Yes. And it's the easy fire, to the see firing right? process. Firing course. process. Yes, 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 you yes. get super hot. Yeah. And you get super, super hot because it all starts yeah, like yeah, building yeah. up. What happens is that energy moves through certain lines including the do channel yeah and often when it moves through your lower back once again because it's meeting resistance because there's too much energy going through your lower yeah. back it's really hot very hot they call that what the ming fire, the ming fire. Yeah. yeah there's a fire in your back because all yeah. of a sudden all that excess energy you're accessing the reserves of your jing and all that extra energy is there right it looks like a burning yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah okay. after a while your body will open up yeah it will open up and it gets used to having that much energy so the heat should fade and I think that's something that people should recognize within our chemical training, that the heat is temporary. Because yeah. I've had people panic. They've done it, access the jing, lots of heat, nice and happy, body's nice and warm. Six months later, heat's gone. Okay. And they're like, oh, oh shit, fire's I mean, gone out. I was about to say, so <laughs> the fire hasn't gone out, has it? No, I mean, no, it's not still at all. there burning. It's just that your body has opened, it's allowed it to flow, there's less resistance. There's less resistance. Yeah, yeah, so yeah you the now have the, still there. Yeah, you have the, yeah. the ability to process that chi, right? So it moves in and what happens then is when it processes enough, instead what happens is it's almost like it starts to pull on everything in your abdomen yeah. and you get little sort of movements and twitches in there, which feels almost like something is bubbling okay. yeah. in your abdomen. And this to me is why they call it the cauldron, because it's like the cauldron is full soup. of... Yeah, it's bubbling. full of a soup that's bubbling, right? Yes. So the sign of the lower dantian or lower abdomen, sorry, I shouldn't say lower dantian, shantian, lower dantian is a perineum, right? <laughs> but the abdominal region being starting to fill with chi yeah. in these particular systems is everything starts to feel like it bubbles and pops inside the abdomen because okay. there's now enough energy being accessed to get into that region of yes, the body. Yeah. The shantian system All is working. All these transformations and conversions. Yes. Yeah. What happens from there? I don't want to go into the exact workings of it because there's whole system around it. Yes. But it'll start to move into the solar plexus region or sometimes the diaphragm region. Yeah. 
um, from where, there where it's processed into the rest of the body, and it's this easy is to where understand this why. Is where it spreads, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. Just above John one, really, just kind of moves. That's around. right. And, yeah. and it's easy to think why because it's your earth center. Yeah, yeah. It's the central place from which everything is distributed. The pivot and the transformational center, really. Yeah, they call it yeah. the John Wan, right? The yeah. central stomach. The central stomach. Doesn't mean your stomach sits there. No, no, definitely not. No, it's a, a yeah, central it's location that digests the processing. Like. Yeah, it's the processing and the, and the digestion. Yeah, so that becomes a middle dantian, right? Yes, yeah. Then the upper dantian gets reached. And because now there is too much energy going into... The, well, not too much. That's the wrong bit. Extra. A lot. Yeah, energy is not used to doing. Yes. When it hits the upper dantian, it creates the reaction of light. Yeah. Not heat. If yeah. your head gets hot, that's bad. Yeah. It means that she is rising in an unhealthy fashion. Yeah. That's an unhealthy fire forming, right? Yeah. But if it rises in the correct fashion, when you close your eyes, a white light should shine within That's your head. That's how it manifests when it hits the... Yeah. Um, I mean, you've seen that, right? Mm. When when yeah. I've emitted chi yeah, strong. into your head, mm. there's a strong white light that goes off inside your head, right? Yeah. It's it's kind of... It's not easy to... Like, you can't miss it. You don't miss it, no. It's, no. Like, it's literally like... Um, how can I explain it? So when you've got your eyes closed, and like, you imagine... Yeah. Yeah, this has never happened to me. But I imagine <laughs> if, you, if you go out in in the paparazzi, <laughs> okay, kind of snapping photos at you. But you know, all these flashes going off. It's literally, yeah. It just, you might get that after these podcasts. You realise. Well, that's what you told me. That's why I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one, you. Come on. Um, but yeah, no. It's literally like imagine if you were if you had your eyes closed, but there's lots mm. of kind of flashes going off mm-hmm. um, in in front of your eyes. You know, yes. and that that's coming from the extra chi being emitted. Yes, yeah, I mean, it's into mistaken. the upper dantian, right? You can't. You don't think it's happening. It's mm. not like I think it could be happening. No, you know it. Yeah, you know it. And that's that's because once again the the upper dantian is trying to process probably the pineal gland, but I don't know. Is trying to process right. this extra energy that you've accessed within the perineum yes, that's going yeah. into the going into the head, you know, it's going, oh shit, where's all this energy from? And then the basis of that is at higher levels, the more still the mind is, the more condensed that light becomes. Yeah. So if the mind is active and you're going, whoa, lights, then it's like you're saying a flash that's spreading. Okay, yeah, yeah. But if you combine that with long periods of sitting, what happens is the light actually starts oh, it to really consolidate starts down. To converge. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it looks like a full moon. And this is the moon that we were talking about in the last podcast. Yeah, it's the moon on, on the, the mountain peak. Of, yeah, that was yeah the white moon on the mountain peak. Like I said, right? when I experienced it, mm-hmm. it, it's, it was just, it's all, it's all over the place. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's just, it's, it's, yeah, it's just, like crazy going going crazy. That's right, yeah, like fireworks or something. Right? That's a, yeah, yeah. No, that's a good yeah, good explanation. Yeah. It's like fireworks going off. That's right. Um but yeah, so that t- that center that starts to consolidate, does it? Yeah, so when you were having it you were laying on your back on a massage table yeah. and having it emitted into your head, right? Yes, yeah, someone yeah. else. But if that light could be formed from your jing, yeah. so that extra potential energy was accessed from the base of the body and it reaches the upper dantian and you're meditating, then as your mental faculties go still then the light consolidates down to a sphere. So it's kind of like your vision is becoming clearer and it kind of just... Yeah, uh, and then it's the pill. Oh, interesting. That's the, that's that's the, the first pill. formation or the first ingredient of the pill. That's the dan. Right. Or the first part of yeah, the yeah. dan, right? Yes, so yeah. you could say that alchemy, what alchemy is, is manipulation of the light. Yeah. But with the light they mean is the extra energy from the jing reaching the It's the manifestation of the, of the, of yeah. the jing hitting the... Yeah. And that's why they call it a pill, right? It looks like a little pill. A little pill. Like a, you know, like a honey pill, an old classical... Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, herbal pill or something like that, right? Well, that was external alchemy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure, yeah. So, yeah, that makes sense. So the Shantian systems are based on this. Yeah. So from that, we can see that they didn't want to talk about the heart as a middle dantian. Yes. Because it wasn't used. Mm. And they didn't want to talk about the lower abdomen, particularly as a dantian, because yeah. although the energy gathers there, it's not it's not the key processing point, right? No, no, no. The key processing point is a lower dantian, lower the solar dantian. plexus, and the head. Yeah, it makes sense. So because their aim within the shantian systems was to access the shantian energy, they placed their dantian somewhere else. Yeah. And then because the hotian systems was simply to maximize the potential energy you had, yeah. then they placed their dantian in, it in the first location, mm-hmm. right? And that, for me, became the distinction between the two. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. It's just that still, I just find it bizarre that they just both said each other was wrong. Yeah, me too. Do you know? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> People like to say the other thing is wrong. Because I, only because I'd imagine mm. that the, um, especially the Shantian, 